Hello, I'm Robert Wolf. And I'm Gabriel Peterson. And you're watching Innovation Coffee, where the coffee is hot, but the innovation is hotter. And unfortunately today, uh, because uh, as you can see, we are in a new area, uh, we don't have any coffee. I'm very disappointed, Gabe. How did we let that slip? Uh, last minute uh, changes? Or... My goodness, yes. Yeah. But yes, I think uh, I think you you watching may have noticed if you've watched this step, this show before, um, we are in a new studio, something that we have been trying to get for a long time. We're finally able to up the production value of this awesome series, Innovation Coffee. And as such, um, we got permission to open a studio. And so um, over time, you're going to notice this studio start to evolve. Right now, it is a little bit archaic. We're on a bit of a plastic table here with a nice little tablecloth. We have our computers here, but we're going to be setting up a stream deck that we that we have here. So we'll have all sorts of cool interactive things going on. We'll get our background updated over time and uh, lots of lots of cool stuff happening. Now, uh, Gabe, today's episode, we're going to be talking about the new developer hub. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we have Jason Andrews here with us. Distinguished be engineer from ARM. Yes. Yes. And so we're going to be talking about the developer hub. We're going to be diving into learning paths, which is, I think, Jason's forte here. He's the one, I want to say, the creator, him and his team behind the learning paths section of the developer hub we're before all of this we're going to comb through the entire hub talk about all the cool resources and tools that are available to developers building on arm now i want to remind anyone who's watching this if you have questions throughout the episode feel free to post those into the youtube chat we'll make sure that we get to them as soon as possible whether it's for our guests or gabriel or myself as well as liking this video because if you do like it don't, don't like it if you don't like it but don't hit the thumbs down either but uh, if you like the episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the ARM Software Developer YouTube channel because we are here every single week, 5 p.m. UTC, bringing you awesome content like this. I'm going to interrupt you. I yes. will say if you don't like it, thumbs down it because any interactions actually boost it in the algorithm. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And no one sees the thumbs downs anymore. So if you hate it, that actually still helps us. <laughs> But yeah, okay, cool. So I think first off, we need to bring Jason into the call because uh, he's going to help us comb through this developer hub and hopefully all three of us together can point out some of the things that we enjoy the most or have enjoyed the most thus far experiencing this hub, which was only released about a week ago. So Jason, bringing him on. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Innovation Coffee, Jason. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. I, th I think you have the record now for uh, most appearances on Innovation Coffee. Oh, good. Uh, keep at it. I love it every time. We always have a great time. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, cool. So, Jason, um, let's bring up my screen. You know, first of all, actually, let's talk a little bit about the origins of the Developer Hub. We've been working on this for a long time, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been some time. I mean, it really came from our uh, launch of the ARM Developer Program that we did last fall. So as soon as we started that program, we started people joining. We had a lot of excitement. And we realized, OK, we want to do a little more for developers. And what can we do next? And the hub was the thing. I think I want to take it even further back than that, Jason. I mean, I agree that we started building the hub and actually like solidifying it during that time. But I feel like mm -hmm. you and I have been having discussions on the developer experience for about like two or three years now. It goes back a long time oh, yeah. trying to figure out, <laughs> yeah, like how should developers experience a developer site? And yeah. it should involve collaboration, the ability to contribute, the ability to consume, the ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, while ARM has all of these things, they're very kind of isolated. And with the developer hub, at least the way I view it, it kind of brings all of these aspects, all of these things that developers want and need to progress you know, successfully in their developments into one place. And, and I think that you know, like working together with teams like Jason's team, with my colleague over here, Gabe, and all of the people around ARM, I think we're finally on the right course here and we really put together something amazing. So um, any other things there, Jason? Sorry, I didn't mean to no, you're doing doing great so far. It, it did go back quite a ways. So it that's, did, uh, yeah. It's great to see. Excellent. So here we have the developer hub. And for those of you who want to check it out, maybe Gabe can help me out with a banner here. I want to say a, a hello to Hybrid Robotics and Mark, who's uh, in the chat here. Hello, hello. Um, developer hub is arm.com forward slash developer dash hub. And uh, when you land on this page, you'll notice that we've made a really big effort in making sure that all of the different kind of um, entities that fold in, like I mentioned earlier, under this ARM developer experience is present here. And when you're developing stuff, you think of 
ARM, but you also maybe think of ARM partner technologies. And so you have access to partners, markets that you may be developing for, of course, developers and all the different developer stuff, support, training, company, what is ARM, um, and then different products. But I think the meat of this particular um, uh, site is present down here. I'm gonna make my screen a little smaller so we can fit more in here at a time. But basically um, you have all these little cards that you can click on. And the first one that pops up here is probably my favorite and uh, not just because Jason's here, but my favorite is learning paths. Um, and we're gonna dive, we're gonna take a deep dive into this one uh, later on in the episode because learning paths, Jason is here, the, the creator, him and his team of the learning paths. Um, and Gabriel, who put together a very uh, a nice little uh, demo, a learning path in its own, that will be contributed into this learning paths section. And um, Jason, maybe real quick, you can just give us a little bit of an overview of, you know, what is learning paths uh, and, and what it means in terms mm -hmm. of, yeah, contributions. Yeah, for sure, we can do that. Um, yeah, learning paths, it's really all about long form written how-to content, right? I mean, if you ask developers and surveys and all that stuff, um, always, almost always the number one thing requested is more code examples, more how-tos, more you know, ex examples, demos, things I can get my hands on and run and use and learn. Um, so that's really what we're going after. Uh, and I've been you know, like a blogger for decades and I wrote a lot of these kind of how-to articles, but I just felt like it's not quite right. I mean, you, you write them, you teach things, and then they kind of get stale and they fall in the blog pile. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not right. So <laughs> learning path is a way to you know, have this long form written how-to content. It's always up to date, it's always current, and it's a community project. That's the biggest thing is, you know, we don't want to sit in arm and, and write stuff. We want everybody to participate. So this is really the way we've done it. And it's very unique to have, you know, community participation on arm.com. So when all of you participate, you're going to be putting content on arm.com, which is really cool. Yeah, and I love how the first two buttons you see here, I mean, other than the header here, right, like the, the navigation bar, is request and create. So you can come into this site and you could say, or you could be looking for an ARM resource and not find it and then land on this page and be like, hey, maybe someone out there has built this or maybe someone out there could help me build this. And so you're able to request content, correct? Yeah, that's right. So if you have ideas and you can't contribute yourself, you know, just click that, you'll land right in GitHub and you can put in a request and say, you know, I'd like to see a learning path about this topic. You know, if anybody's out there wants to do it, that's great. That is awesome. And then creating means basically you can create it yourself and, uh, and I, I got to give thanks. That was uh, annoying me. Yeah. <laughs> wants me to accept the cookies. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then you can also create it yourself. And this right here, this creation process is the process that we will be covering shortly. Gabe, again, as I said, has a learning path that he has prepared in preparation for this episode. Jason is here as the gatekeeper to this particular portion or section of the website. And so we will work together with Jason to get this submission submitted into and accepted into the learning paths portal. All right, next up here, we have on demand. Now, this particular section I want to I want to talk about because for those of you who have attended any of our virtual ARM Dev Summits, I think we had two of them. Is that right, Jason? One or two? Yeah, maybe even three. Maybe <laughs> it felt three, like we were yeah. making videos for a while. <laughs> yeah. So this particular section of the website, this was our, uh, you know, I want to say attempt and or um, ability to take all of the good content, videos and tech talks and webinars and everything that basically we've built um, for these dev summits and beyond and keep them uh, available for you all to continue to consume. And so there's different ways to consume this particular on-demand content. You have it in a session format where you can look into tech deep dives, workshops, small bites, which are small videos, of course. And it looks like we'll be continue to add to this, but you can see that right now out of all of our sessions, we have 63 total sessions here. And uh, maybe we do a maybe we do a recap on on this episode a year from now and see how many more there are. Hopefully, at, at least a 10x, right? <laughs> I mean, there should be a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, Gabe's going to make sure of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 100 has to come from you at least. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, the next thing over here, and by the way, on demand content. I really love this content because for the most part, the stuff that's up there right now is 
very, very well thought out technical content. And so if you go check that out, this is the same stuff that you would have consumed if you went to a dev summit of sorts that ARM hosts. And so we make sure that the content up there is legitimate, good content. Um, okay, let's go back over here. Um, events. And this is, this is I, I really like this one because I kind of feel like People out there may be thinking, at least this is this is what I think people are thinking. Where is where's ARM going to be today? Pro probably not too many people are thinking that, but I'm hoping that that, that they are. Where's ARM going to be today? What event is ARM going to? Yeah, and I think it's less that they're thinking about that ahead of time and more like, I'm going to this cool event. I wonder if ARM's going to be there. Yeah, I, the reason I say it is because I've been pinged by a lot of my developer friends out there in the world being like, hey, are you going to be at, are you going to be at Embedded Vision Summit? Hey, are you going to be at Embedded World? And I'm like, Oh, no, I'm not going to Embedded World today. But now I can just be like, oh, check out our events section to know if, if we'll be there. And so um, here you can see that uh, we have a lineup of events where ARM will be present at. And this can include either finding one of us developer evangelists on the floor, on the showroom floor, walking around with our fancy ARM shirts. Oh, you got to get me to accept those cookies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, actually uh, in the form of a sponsorship. And I'm going to highlight this one right here because it's the closest one that's coming up. This is our open or not our. This is the open source event up in San Francisco. It's over by the Fisherman's Wharf. And it is going to be just amazing. Uh, this one's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Jason, I wish I wish you were coming with us. I feel like you would have a lot of fun there, too. But this is mm -hmm. this, this is a mix between a VidCon and a Maker Faire. All right. And uh, keep in mind, when, when I say a mix up between VidCon, highlighting VidCon, we're talking about 75 plus content creators from all around the world who are coming there, bringing their communities along with them. And the showroom floor, I have already gotten to see it, the different events and features that are going to be there, the showcases. There's going to be a there's going to be a a boxcar derby racing uh, set up there and the losers get chucked into an industrial grade wood chipper. All right. So, <laughs> so you better win. Otherwise your car gets chipped up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, robot fights, robot There's fights. Be, um, giant Tesla coil going on. Um, it's also cool because he didn't mention we have a booth there. So arm is actually going to have a nice setup right along the main walkway. There's going to be no way you're going to miss it for anyone who attends. And uh, we'll be there and we'll in fact be filming some special in a, or a special brews, some innovation coffees while there as well. Yes, absolutely. And so, yeah, anyways, uh, just, you know, I, I think it goes out. It, I don't need to explain it too much further. The uh, events page covers the things that ARM will be at. And then you can kind of read up inside these little descriptions we have here, like in this case, ARM is sponsoring. And then you can read up if we're kind of more like more so talking about, you know, the event itself then you can kind of assume that at least a developer evangelist will be there or someone from ARM will be roaming around discovering the event and seeing whether or not we want to participate further next year. So uh, lots of interesting stuff happening there. Discord. Gabe, do you want to talk about the Discord or do you want me to talk about the Discord? I mean, I can talk about the Discord. I have it actually. If we go to, uh, let me hop over there and then share my screen. Uh, and Okay, I am. Are you sharing your screen? Uh, no, I was, I'm sharing the screen. I was going to ask you to pop me in that way. Oh, gotcha. We don't have the million, uh, recursive views. I gotcha. Okay. So here's our discord and it's just a great place for our community and our, the members of our developer program to interact. So you have things like the general chat where you can see, I posted that we're going live for anyone. Um, but we have all the different topics. If you're into embedded microcontroller, server and cloud, laptop, desktop, et cetera. There's all of these. There's a section for our ARM ambassadors so they can hang out. So if you apply to become an ARM ambassador, we have a special area just for you. Um, we have just like a water cooler in section. I know you created, I can't remember the name of the channel, but it's for like memes and off topic yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, so the Discord is just great. And you can see Robert and I are here quite often along with a lot of other ARM experts. Jason's and, there all the time. Yes. yes. Uh, J Jason, actually, I'm curious. What are your thoughts so far on Discord? I mean, have you found that uh, the questions to be worthwhile and the interactions? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I mean, the platform is a little busy for me. I'm kind of old school and slow, so I can't always <laughs> keep up with it. Uh, but it's uh, there's some good, good nuggets in there I can find. Yeah, and, are you an IRC guy? Yeah, I'm Yeah, terminal. I'm all terminal, yeah. All terminal, <laughs> all terminal. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. So di Discord has definitely been a good one. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we launched this less than a, I want to say, a, well, we officially launched it. I, I want to call it a launch, but it was more so a relaunch um, less than a year ago now. And we're already at almost, I think, 4,000 members in this Discord server. So it is quite active. Um, there are people from all, there are developers from all walks of life. So, so just like Gabe kind of showcased all of the different types of channels we have, there are developers in there from all channels. And one thing I really want to highlight here, Jason being on the call right now, ARM experts. This is something that ARM has not done before, at least to my knowledge, is that we are bringing the professionals, the experts within ARM to the forefront. So for those of you working on things that you either want to get more insight on. If you're getting to, if you get into a bind or get stuck somewhere, um, these are opportunities for you to speak to uh, ARM experts and get the support that you need. I think it's very, very nice. Yeah, we even have a nice support section that you can see right here where you can essentially create a, it's not quite a ticket, but it's kind of like a ticket, a little bit lower barrier to entry where we can see the exact support issues that you're having and can suggest fixes and can continue the interaction until you get the problem resolved. Yeah, it's kind of like a forum, right? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, it's a bit like a forum, um, though uh, we don't want to pull away from the community forum. Uh, this has turned into quite an active area uh, that I feel um, is quite useful for the developers out there. Um, cool. Let's go back to the hub then. That's Discord. Yeah. For those of you who know Discord, I mean, you know, there's and you're a developer, there's no reason not to be in this server. Um, if you don't know Discord, I highly suggest just checking it out and seeing if it's if it you know if it's your type of, of place to be. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. All right, so let's get back to these learning paths. Learning paths. Now we did Discord community, and this is a perfect perfect time to talk about community. Community.arm.com has been around for a long time, and this is the place where we host Arm, our blogs primarily, and our forums. So for those of you who have utilized this area before, you'll be familiar with it. But um, I want to say that I know it most for being the place where you read your blogs, right? Uh, while we've tried to, you know, get these forums active and, and you know, participated in, it's become a little bit more difficult uh, to, to get those booming. Um, but the blogs for sure, and if I were to pick one place to go um, on this uh on this website, it would be the blog section. And look, sure enough, there's Michael Haller, our missing developer evangelist, he's on holiday today. But um, uh, just from, from us alone, like from our team, we post a last week in ARM. Uh, and this one right here, you can see Michael Hall posted a cool little blog here. Every single week he posts one of these and it talks about the different stuff that's happening. Oh, look at that, new ARM developer hub has been launched. So you can go into this these particular um, blogs and you can find every single thing that you want to, uh, to, to, to know about ARM. Yeah, it's just a nice, great roundup. So uh, if you want to know what new GitHub repos or blogs or anything like that, you don't have to search seven different sources. It, I think we need to change it to last week on ARM. Last week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So if there was one place, uh, you know, to talk about it, or to, to, to visit, I would suggest checking out the developer uh, community. I would suggest checking out the blogs. It was like Mike's even, you know, changing up the backgrounds here every now and then. Just cool for his blogs. But there's lots of other stuff, right? Like this is, the, this is the last week in ARM blog, which Michael posts on behalf of our team. But you can see there are lots of uh, other blogs in here that can get more technical um, informative with regards to the things that ARM and our community are doing, especially, uh, you know, our partners, the technologies that our partners are, 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 are working on. So um, cool stuff there. Training. Okay, let's check this one out. Actually, I don't think I did enough research on this one. Okay, this takes you to the ARM developer website, developer.arm.com and the training area here. So this gets you access to online training platforms and different, uh, different paths that you can take to get familiar with various ARM technologies, right? So you can see Kyle Studio, you can see RAN Acceleration Library here, um, you can see uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, I wanna say, what are these resource manuals or reference manual, technical reference manuals. And um, I'm looking here, it looks like you can either launch online training. Let me see this, let's, let's click something here. Jason, are you familiar with this area by chance? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. So the online training portal is a way that you can access um, mostly videos, I would say, but there's some written content also. So this is like if you're new to ARM, you want to do architecture training, 
software developer training, um, you know, ARM runs these courses. And we used to do a lot of live in-person uh, training. And then we kind of migrated more to online and on-demand type training because just COVID and travel and all that. Um, so you can go into the, the portal and you can learn quite a lot uh, from those training libraries. Yeah, and you, you, you know uh, what, I'm, what I'm noticing here at least a little bit is that it is somewhat gated. So, so this is this is a differentiator. Um, so, if you mm -hmm. wanted to launch online training platform, you do need to register, uh, which is not a problem, right? I mean, it's great to be registered for these sites uh, because you do get access and information, you know, fed to you, uh, you know, quite quite frequently or frequently enough. Um, so, definitely worth registering. I would say I am registered, by the way. I'm just not going to log in right now. But there there is a there is a definitely a, a worth in doing this. I want to say that I want to say that it's it's possible that this training focuses more on the hardware side of things. Am, mm -hmm. I, am I wrong in saying that, Jason? No, it's correct. It's going to be more on hardware and, and like the, the low level software. So if you're dealing with the MMU programming or interrupt controller programming or kind of architecture features, um, that's you're going to see more of that. There you go. OK, cool. And I think these actually these next these next four cards here are all developer.arm.com. So downloads, uh, there's a variety of tools, obviously, that ARM creates and pushes out and makes available to developers, um, compilers, tools, ARM Mobile Studio. And for those of you who aren't familiar, ARM Mobile Studio actually now has a free tier there, too. So like if you're working on it, there's Kyle. Um, I, I think we have Alinea Studio under here somewhere. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of different tools and, and stuff that that are available uh, for developers out there, and this would be the place to go is the download section. Documentation once again also takes you developer to, to, to developer.arm.com. Here you can search for all sorts of different documentation. Developer.arm.com is pretty much the ergo facto place for documentation, developer documentation. So um, there's a nice search engine. If we go to the front line here, there's a good way to search for everything that you may need. You can choose to go kind of isolate or, or uh, single out areas that you're looking for stuff in. I think I accidentally clicked automotive. Um, and then look, hey, Jason, there's your learning paths up here. There so, you go. Yep. Yeah, so it, it, it aggregates a lot of stuff in um, into developer.arm.com. And finally, the last section here, which just takes you right to the front. So um, you can go uh, search for all sorts of stuff. And then uh, here's some items that you can just click on, you know, and, and see what it takes you to, like Unity. And you'll find a bunch of stuff about Unity and documentation, best practices. It aggregates in blogs from our community site. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of you could poke around there for hours, probably um, or days. And, yeah. and just continue reading stuff. It pulls stuff in from everywhere. And there are a lot of resources in that in that area. And then to tie it back into our Discord, if you ever have any questions about anything that you are learning about, you can ask the experts from directly within there. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Cool. All right. Well, uh, that's, uh, you know, referring to experts and uh, or talking about experts let's kind of out all these things here. <laughs> my goodness all right so speaking about experts speaking about developers and speaking about learning paths we have jason here to to and jason and gabe here to talk to us about the learning paths section now i want to start this off let me stop sharing here oh you stopped sharing for me no, I did not. I think I must have clicked stop sharing. <clears throat> or it did it automatically when you yeah. close the. Has anyone ever wanted to build a <laughs> for you chassis filled with single board computers? Well, I did. I wanted to do this a long time ago and I called my buddy Gabe a lot. This was like, what, two years ago, three years ago, I think at this point. Yeah, I think it started three years ago. So I said, Gabe, I want to fill a for you chassis with a bunch of different single board computers. I, and this was this was at, actually I want to start at the beginning of the story here because then we're going to lead it. Ajit Reyna, one of our ARM innovators, back when the ARM innovator program existed, he calls me up and says, Robert, I need five jets and nanos. And I said, OK, yeah, sure, because he was an ARM innovator. You know, we like helping our ARM innovators get access to hardware. I was like, I'll ship them to you. And he says, well, I'm in India. So if you ship them to me then I'm going to have to pay massive import taxes. Can't you just plug them in at your house and just get, let me SSH into them? And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Do you, do, do people like need this frequently? And he's like, oh yeah, if you could do that, if you could do that for like, you know, me and my meetups and all this kind of stuff, workshops that I want to host. And I was like, okay, huh, that's a good idea. 
I called David Tischler, who was another ARM innovator, and he runs a company called Mini Nodes, and he has just tons of Raspberry Pis hooked up. You can rent them out. He provisions them to you, and then you can use these Raspberry Pis. I said, well, what if ARM wanted to subsidize this? And you know, now that I think about it, it's like, well, we're going to give away these things that David Tischler's charging for. Maybe it wasn't in his best interest to help on that, but he took it on. We put it under the Works on ARM program, but how do we achieve this? I said, David, we need to get you a bunch of 4U chassis filled with these single board computers that we can provision out to people. Well, he says, you can't just put these Raspberry Pis in. They, they're, they're hard to pull out and put in. And, you know, how do we get more different types of single board computers in there? Raspberry Pis are fun. They're kind of like good at everything, but great at nothing. And, and so we need to put, put some more beefy computers in there. So I know Gabe over here, before he joined ARM, was great at uh, – 3D design, right? And uh, and doing uh, 3D printing and 3D design. And so I said, Gabe, can you build us a universal rack mount system that fits into a 4U chassis that we can send to David Tischler and just stack it full with, with uh, different types of single board computers, 96 boards, Raspberry Pis, NVIDIA Jetson Nanos, NVIDIA uh, Xavier's, everything. It could all fit in this universal slate that you slide into this rack. And Gabe's like, sure, give me a shot. So, so uh, Gabe built it. And this is what we are going to be contributing to the Learning Hub today. So for anyone who would like to build the thing that we are going to show you right now is this. Now, right here, you can see the racks and I'll pull some out in a second. Uh, Gabe is going to give you the files you need to build your own system here, uh, the instructions to put it all together. And at this point, I think uh, I'm just going to hand it over to Gabe and I might be poking around back here and showing you stuff while they're talking. But this is the whole contribution now, the learning paths. Yeah, so just a very brief overview. It's essentially modular bays that can fit inside of a 4U chassis that have these removable cards, universal cards. So they're built to house, um, there was a list of, given to me, it was like um, Raspberry Pi, Jetson Nano, Hummingboard, uh, Dragonboard 410C, a couple other 96 boards, I believe. So I created these systems where you could just easily insert it and remove it and have the, the Ethernet ports, because that's what David Tischler needed the most, um, just very easily accessible to, to run the entire thing. And so I created a learning path to assemble the thing. We set up a GitHub initially just to house the CAD files as well as the... Um, or I should say all the CAD files, it has the STL files. So if you don't want to change anything, you can literally just bring the STL files into your slicer of choice and then 3D print it. Or you can take the Fusion 360 project file, which I also included, in case you want to make any modifications. So it's just, it's currently under, I think, uh, an Apache 2.0 license. So just completely do with what you will with this project. It's um, very easy to modify though. If maybe you're using a single board computer that isn't one of the supported ones and has an odd form factor, well, you can just add the holes to the universal card in the exact place you need to. And I mean, with Fusion 360, it's extremely easy. And for anyone who hasn't used it in the past, they have a free tier for uh, makers and hobbyists. So even though I think when you go to the website, it looks like you have to pay for it, uh, they, they do a good job hiding it, but they completely support a, a free version. So, so I want to I bring Jason in here real quick. So Gabe has a thing that he built. Now, mm -hmm. Jason, you are the gatekeeper to the learning path, <laughs> right? Or one of the gatekeepers. What... Mm -hmm. What is what does Gabe need to focus on here to get this contributed? Is it but what what are the things that you're looking for as the gatekeeper before he goes in and tries doing this? Yeah, so I mean, in Learning Pass, there's a few things. I mean, of course, it has to be ARM related. That's the first thing. So we're not like interested in things that are not ARM related. So this sounds quite ARM related. That's a that's a good start. Um, you know, the second thing is typically we're focusing on software developers. Now, this is a little off. It's hardware. It's a hardware thing, but it is something that a software developer may want to build because, you know, like me, I got a table back there with all kinds of boards sitting on it that I'm shuffling around. It sounds pretty interesting. So that's that's good. Um, then after that, it's really going to be about the 
quality of the content and the usefulness of it? And, you know, do we think people are interested in this, right? Is it hands-on? Can I work with it? Um, you know, is it, is it usable basically? Because a lot of times people will write stuff that it sounds more like marketing. They're like, okay, I got this software. I ran it on ARM. It went fast. It was good, but it doesn't tell you how, right? In Learning Path, it's all about the how-to. So if it's not telling you how to do the thing, then it probably doesn't fit here. It could be a blog or it could go somewhere else if you just want to talk about sheer goodness of the thing that you made. And so uh, is this a useful project? Do you think that you think that you're going to accept this one? Uh, maybe. I just heard about it today. So. <laughs> maybe. We'll have over. to see. We'll have to see. Yeah. All right. We'll go through all so, the steps. And then at the last moment, you'll just no, yeah, reject. Yeah, you'll just, no, <laughs> not merge. Not merge. But it's a good point. I mean, we should share with the audience that if you have ideas that you're not sure about, it's a good idea to jump on GitHub and maybe put in, in the discussion area. You can just say, hey, I'm thinking about this thing. Does it sound interesting before you get too far into it and realize, yeah, this is off base. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask us. We'll, we'll respond right away on the GitHub discussions area and let you know what we think of it. Excellent. All right. So then uh, are you ready to, to have Gabe make this contribution? Because the goal here is to do this live and have Jason vet it live and then hopefully get it onto the website. Essentially, just to demonstrate how quick and easy the mm -hmm. entire process is. It, it may seem a little intimidating if you're just looking at this. So seeing it just broken down quickly. Well, uh, let's do I, it. All right. Yeah, let's take a look. OK, so let, let me, me know when you're ready for me to share your screen. Yep. Yeah, so you can go over here. So I. Are you sharing my screen? Yep, you're good. All right, perfect. So the learning paths, of course, is generated directly. Uh, well, I don't know if directly, but it's generated from the GitHub. I know, Jason, you said that there's yeah. an extra step, but it's essentially- Well, there's from a publish. So let me give people a quick overview very fast. So the way it works is that in GitHub, there's a project there, and there's a bunch of markdown files. And the markdown files generate the content of the site. So when people add markdown files, uh, we published the site using a tool called Hugo. It's a static website generator. I mean, it's one of many. There's lots of them out there, but it's a very popular one. Performance is good. And so it will take the markdown files from GitHub and generate the static site. And then you'll see your work immediately in the browser. Yeah, it's great. I, that's probably one of the things we should mention. You definitely don't need like web design to contribute to nope. this or anything. Just markdown. Yeah. Yep. All right. So the first thing is you'll go to the... Uh, to the Learning Paths GitHub, which actually, do you want to include this in a banner or anything like that? But- um, I can get to it through the website. Okay, perfect. So you're going to have the Learning Paths GitHub and you're going to go and you're going to fork it. Now, I've already done this, of course. So it's going to go there. We'll go to our, it'll be in your own repository now or your own GitHub now. And then in my case, I just need to bring my fork up to date. It's a- uh, been a while since I last did this. So from this point, you would normally grab your SSH link and then clone it to your machine. But because I already have it here, I'm just going to do a git pull to grab the latest up-to-date version. And then from there, I have all the files. So if we look in here, this is what you'll currently see. So it's just underneath content and then underneath learning paths you find the category that best describes what you're doing. In my case, I felt servers and cloud computing because this is more of like an infrastructure type use case, logging into them remotely and using them in, in that way. Um, there is also cross-platform if you can't really decide and you feel it fits multiple categories at the same time. But so you go here and then usually the easiest way because these things have specific formatting is to find a good one uh, that looks formatted nicely, and then just copy it and rename it. Um, so I, of course, I'm not going to do all this work live. I've already done it. So I'm going to take the version that I have live and just drag it right into there. Yeah. You'll interrupt him if he's doing something wrong. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> drastically telling people the wrong thing. Okay. So now I should have the universal SBC chassis at this time. Um, one quick note is if you have Hugo installed on your machine, you can actually preview these changes mm -hmm. live. It'll give you a link when you run it in your uh, terminal. It'll tell you the exact link to go to. 
I noticed just the other day that my Hugo needs to be reinstalled and I didn't have time. So that's the only step that I'm not going to demonstrate. But uh, if uh, if Jason wants to show it off, he ha I know he said he has it running on his machine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring these files over. And one of the things I pr probably should have done first, but I'll do it now. It doesn't really matter. Can you make it, your font bigger? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's one of the no, command shift your plus in your yeah, command shift plus. Oh, hey, yo, learn hey, something yo. new. Okay. So one of the things I should have done first and just because I'm doing this live and I don't talk and think at the same time. So good. Uh, I am going to uh, do this slightly out of order, but I would normally create a new branch and I'll just call this, I'll just call it universal chassis. I had popcorn right now. Uh, so now I'm in the new branch. So I will add the new things. It's not adding th anything because it's created a new branch already with it. But uh, check, get status. Yeah, so it does see all my new files. So get commit. Again, if I'm doing things out of step, let me know because um, I don't multitask well. All right, so... <laughs> um, Learning path for a universal uh, fragment system. Okay, that's good. And then get push origin. What did I name this? Uh, do you have any? Because I always forget. Okay, universal jazzy. Do you have push. any conventions, Jason, that you'd like people to follow with their commits and their pull request uh, comments? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's just a good summary of what the thing is. This is perfectly fine. Okay, so I went ahead and I pushed this to my own repository. So I'm going to go back to that. And if I refresh, then I should be able to do a compare and pull request now. You'll see that option mm -hmm. at the top. So I'm going to do here. So you want to go in and verify they created this nice little checklist that auto-populates, which is very cool. Um, I have reviewed create a learning path, which I have. I have checked my contribution for universe, or confidential information. Yeah, there should definitely not be any in, in mine. And then I will just, I've been putting comments at the top. I never asked if it was right and you guys never uh, <laughs> smacked my hand for it. So. No, you can, you can write whatever you like there. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just add a note. The files themselves are hosted on the X. On external on I can type external. Okay, and then I will create my pull request. So at this point, it goes to Jason, who or mm -hmm. Jason or Prina as well as one of the reviewers, correct? And yeah, we got a couple of people who keep up. Uh, Prina's on vacation today, so she's not going to do anything right this moment, but yeah, it's been submitted. Okay, and then while he's looking at that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of show off the format because I breezed over that knowing that there was going to be a little bit of dead time. So initially you have your index. So this is where you give it a title, you estimate completion time. This doesn't apply so much to mine because I didn't include like 3D printing time, which can take weeks if you're doing a large enough project. Um, the objectives, the prerequisites, um, the author, skill level, subjects, um, ARM IPs, if you're using particular technology, you can call out if it uses like a Cortex Zero or whatever. This is the format that's provided by, Jason, real quick though, because I want to make sure that you can share your screen too, because I also want to see what happens on your end as well, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, but so this... the learning paths, they have a certain format. So if you look at like the underscore index.md there, that's exactly. going to populate your front page. So if you maybe jump in the browser in another learning path, uh, you'll see that they, they all have the same uh, format. So yeah, click, click there and then click server and cloud and just click the first one. Yeah, so this is basically populated from that index file. So you'll see the about this learning path. Gotcha. It tells you, yeah, who is the author, skill level, how long it takes. And then the rest of those bullets uh, come from that index file. So basically just follow the format and uh, put in the text for your specific situation. And then it shows like that. Gotcha. 
Um, yeah, no. So I, I guess I, I also meant that in terms of you merging it and getting it up onto the site, I, I wanted to make sure that we followed you when 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 the time comes. So once Gabe's done, I guess you know with this index part, then we move over to you so that you can kind of walk us through the merging process. Yeah, and I just wanted to. I'm not going to go through the details because there's actually built-in instructions, but you can see it's marked down. So the index, it's going to have these weights at the bottom, or actually, it's at the top of most pages. It, it's just for the index. It's at the bottom, but that determines page order if you're wondering how that mm -hmm. works because you see these markdown files aren't named in order or anything they're just so you can see weight three so this is like the third page uh fourth page uh second page and yeah it's just straight markdown you have your your normal links your headers um your image files that kind of thing so easy enough add whatever images you have so i have like various steps are in there. Um, all of that's just included in it. And then I will go back to the actual learning paths. So. Okay. So you probably won't believe this is a live demo, but the uh, GitHub is not responding for me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So that doesn't happen very often. Okay. I'm so not sure why. Uh, the yeah, the demo gods are angry at the moment. Apparently, I would say so. This is pretty bad. <laughs> so normally, I mean, that's the bulk of the steps that we showed is all you need to do. So it's easy enough. Normally, after GitHub behaves properly, uh, and he he merges the changes, then you'll see your uh, your new page pop up like right away. And it's the format's mm -hmm. kind of nice. You have your uh, your item step by step it looks nice and polished when you look at it and then at the after the end of the steps you get a review section where you generate these quiz questions and then it'll just let you know and it's kind of and i've been using this section to hammer home the important points to keep in mind it's yep. um you, wait it, you put your quiz questions in there Yes. You, you create your own quiz questions. Yes. Yeah, so you'll see. So there's a, there's a couple other files there. If you look at the review, that's your quiz yeah. questions. So there's a format there where you just put in the questions and then the answers and then the correct answer, uh, just as markdown, just as text. And then there's a next steps, which you see the file just above uh, yeah. that tells you, you know, where's the next place you recommend some ah, other resources. Maybe there's a, cool. a blog. Yeah. yeah. I, I Wait, Gabe, go back to that. I want to see what your, your first question was. Oh, the first yeah. question is Yo, silly. I, I love it. I love it. If if a single board computer isn't supported, you are out of luck. <laughs> true, <laughs> true or false? Fal that's false, right? Yeah. And so <laughs> and so one of the things to keep in mind, because I've, uh, I mean, anything programming starts at index zero for the most part. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. So the answer is false in this case. So that's why correct answer is one. And then for number two, it's PETG. Yeah. And so this question's question. more, well, I think no, both important. of them are important. If you're yeah. you're 3D printing it, you want to know you're using yeah. the right stuff because you got to pinch those little sliders out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And PLA has a tendency to snap. I learned that kind of early on with some projects that I wanted to flex just a little. And it's like, yeah, it works great for a week or so. And then it just randomly shatters. But PETG doesn't. And it doesn't matter what slicer you use. Yeah, yeah. It's because the the reason I included that in is my screenshots are or the screenshot I included was Prusa slicer because that's what I use personally, but that's because that's what works best with my printer and setup. So yeah. it's it does not matter. Use whatever works best with your own printer. Cool. So Jason, any luck on communicating with the GitHub? No. <laughs> All right. Well. So, uh, we can we can skip it. It's, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you guys could see the pull request if you're able to reach GitHub. But for some reason, everything is fine on my end except GitHub well, itself. I think Gabe's able to merge merge into. Yeah, but I don't want to merge my own request. Uh, no, no, he, he won't have permission anyway. But anyway, you can if you if you go back. Uh, okay, so you see now there's four pull requests on the screen, and then the uh, the one that you did is there. So if I would go through and merge it, yeah, then it would be accepted. Um, now, at this point, we may go back and forth in some cases. I might yeah. put a comment saying, you know, this could use some cleanup or didn't work for me or doesn't seem correct. Uh, sometimes yeah, we do that with people. Yeah. yeah, I know my last one, actually, I had forgot to do the next step section and Perina mm -hmm. notified me. And right. that's also really easy if you've never done that on GitHub. It's literally just 
make an update and push it. You don't have to create a new pull request. It automatically just adds it to the chain and where you see the, the comments, it'll just be a new item like updated this file and then they can do mm -hmm. it from there. So it's, uh, yep. it's really easy. Yeah, cool. So maybe in lieu of watching the uh, the accept the pull request, maybe I could give a quick demo of the local environment with Hugo. Can I share and do that? Oh, that oh would yeah, that would be great. Yes, yes. And by the way, while, while you do that, uh, I, I'm going to apologize to anyone. Th these microphones, Gabe, I'm wondering, can you get, can you hear like all of my sniffles and everything when I... <laughs> I, I can hear it when you did it like that, but I wasn't <laughs> listening for it before. So I don't know if I yeah. tuned it out or uh, the first day of the new studio with these like, you know, microphones that are grabbing everything and I got the sniffles. You'll have to make a slim deck uh, or a stream deck macro just to mute your own mic. Yeah, something like that. All right, Jason, let me know. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I can bring uh, bring my screen on. Oh my gosh, where's the dark mode? <laughs> oh, you want dark mode? I can no, no, <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. 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 So this is similar to what Gabe had, right? So when you, you clone the repository, I'm, I'm doing this on my local machine. You get the, the tree of files here, and then you can work on the individual markdown files and see the results, you know, locally before you bother with any commits or pull requests. And the way you do it is just run Hugo server. So I'm just going to run Hugo server there in my terminal. And then it's going to serve the site on localhost port 1313. Okay, so if I go in my browser and I got a few tabs, here it is. So localhost 1313, that's a copy of the thing I'm working on, right? So if I'm doing a new learning path, you know, it looks just like learn.arm.com, uh, except your new stuff will show up here. Uh, and you can make changes and uh, do whatever you want here, and then you can just work back and forth. So like right now I'm in the microcontroller section. There's an article about the Raspberry Pi Pico, right? So if I wanted to change this thing, let's say it says it takes 30 minutes. Let's say, no, this, this really takes 60 minutes. So I change it to 60, I save the file. And then if I jump back and find that article here, I'll jump into the microcontrollers and look for the Pico. Um, you'll see now that it says it takes one hour. Okay, so if you look on learn.arm.com, it'll still say 30 minutes, but I have my local copy here uh, saying it takes one hour. So this is super handy because you can see the site exactly how it looks uh, on your own machine. I don't have to like push anything. I don't have to have any web development skills at all. Uh, and I can write new text. I can fix mistakes, however you want it to make it look great before you send in the pull request. This is super cool. This is super cool. You guys, you guys have put together some amazing stuff here. I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. And I like it yeah. too, because I, I, before doing these learning paths, I didn't even know about Hugo. So that's, it's nice because I'm not a web developer myself and I don't really right. enjoy it. So if I ever need to create a site, I'm definitely using Hugo. Yeah, see my right. GitHub is toast. <laughs> yeah, someone okay. actually just com someone actually just commented, someone commented in the chat here, Tui saying GitHub Actions was down some minutes ago. So maybe uh, there's some okay. maybe there's something happening on uh, something happening with GitHub right now and, and uh, yeah it could be it's uh it's okay it's the way demos go but anyway yeah. I mean you can you can work locally like this with Hugo there's lots of ways you can do it I mean Hugo is super straightforward as a tool you just really need to run Hugo server and that's it and you can install it on any kind of machine it works on Windows or Mac or Linux or um, in the cloud there's lots of ways. Um, so those are all good. I would say the one last thing maybe to leave everybody with is on the um, on the front page, this create create button, that's going to be your instructions, right? We didn't show too much of that, but this is sort of like your learning path on how to make a learning path. Uh, so it'll take you through the whole thing, like how to, you know, what is learning path for, how to get set up, what kind of options to run Hugo, how to create the template. Like you saw Gabe kind of did a copy and modify That was perfectly fine. Um, there's also a way to run a command that's called Hugo new that'll actually create like a skeleton uh, that you can work from that works fine too. And then it explains these files that we were going through the index, the review with the quiz questions, the next steps um, to take you to other resources. It's all documented in there. So there's a really nice guide uh, showing you how to make the learning paths. A learning path for your learning paths. Yeah. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. All right. Well, that's awesome, Jason. I, you know, I, I think uh, I think that you 
both covered quite a bit. And, uh, you know, while unfortunate being that we weren't able to get it uh, accepted and shown on the live website today, uh, maybe what we could do next week is in the first five minutes of the show, Jason, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk with you. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll talk with you throughout the week, but you don't have to show up next week. Uh, if, if it gets merged at some point in the week, maybe you can just let us know. And that way we could just show the website off next week and show that the learning path did in fact get accepted and did in fact show on the live website. So you can just pull it up real quick as a recap. Yeah. 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 No problem. Excellent. So um, any last things, Jason, that you'd like to kind of say any plugs, shameless plugs and or otherwise uh, before we close this out? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if there are any developers out there who want to contribute uh, what you learn, what you know about ARM, we would love to have more contributions. It's a really fun place to contribute things. Um, the other thing I'll say is, you know, we'll highlight your contributions. So one thing we didn't show is if you are a community contributor, like here's one example, I'm just going to pull up a person from a company called Remote It. Uh, you'll get your name there. You can put your company, your GitHub, your LinkedIn, whatever other oh. socials. And then you can be on the site. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that you publish content on arm.com and, and we will highlight that. Yep, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The recognition is a big deal. And by the way, do you know if this shows up in SEO? Like, is SE, does SEO pick up any of this stuff? I'm not sure. We just launched the site last week. So we're still working on the Google search and the ranking and, you know, getting everything indexed, but I would think it would, it should. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting because yeah, it should, right? Like if you go search Brenda, Brenda, Brenda stretch, yeah. you know, remote it's, it, you know, with this site pop up on Google. It's search. probably not there yet because, you know, it's, it's so new and, yeah. um, you know, the Google has to keep crawling and find everything, but eventually I believe it will. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, cool. Well, mm -hmm. I think that that's a great plug, Jason, because, uh, you know, I think we want to make sure that people are recognized for their efforts and giving this acknowledgement, right. giving this recognition is very important because, uh, you know, I guess at the core, uh, we're trying to create content or we're trying to provide content for developers around the world so that they can get stuff done on ARM. If your content can be helpful to these developers, then you can get it up there and ARM's not taking credit for it. Like, I think that's, nope. the, that's, that's yeah, really cool. the thing to remember is it's, it's a total community site. Everything yeah. is done with a Creative Commons license. It's all open. You can see it all on GitHub and yeah, super good community effort. Oh, I, my how times have changed. Yes, I love it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very cool. Jason, amazing effort here. You and your team have really killed it when it comes to this, this whole site. And, um, you know, thank you so much for joining us today uh, to be a part of this. And Gabe, you know, thanks for putting together the demo. It's awesome. Yeah, no problem. I'm... Or I guess like, the contribution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the contribution was a little while ago, but yeah, no yeah. problem. Cool. All right. So then I guess it's time to close this out. Jason, I'm going to shut down your screen here. Um, Gabe, any last words before I in uh, this episode for us? Yeah. So like always, go ahead and sign up for our developer program if you haven't already. You can see we used the, the branding for the developer program as temporary decorations, but go ahead and join that. Obviously, if you're a part of that, you'll get a link to our Discord, but join our Discord anyway. Uh, come talk to us, come contribute. Um, it's a fun place to hang out. And then we have a subreddit. Um, yeah, just a place to post anything about projects that were built on ARM, news, uh, cool technology, anything like that. And um, I think that's the normal plugs, anything that... Uh... No, that's it. All right. Cool. All right. Well, everyone, once again, thank you so much for spending your time with us. We appreciate you more than anything. Make sure that you check us out next week. Arms Innovation Coffee brought to you every Thursday at 5 p.m. UTC. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the Arm Software Developer channel. Join us on Discord. Join the Arm Developer Program. If you have questions beyond the live stream, throw a comment in there. We'll be sure to get to those as soon as possible. And we hope you have a wonderful weekend developing on Arm. Take care, Gabe. Well done. <laughs> First day in the studio. Jason, thank you so much. You have a wonderful week. All right, we'll see you soon. All right, All right. thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.